Well, here is the predicament that we are in right now. We were chopping fourth cutting hay here yesterday afternoon. We knew we had rain coming. It came about two hours before we were ready for it. And we've got about two hours worth of hay on the ground to chop. However, it's gonna be a few days before we can get to it. So while it was raining here yesterday afternoon, they did have time to get the mud tires on the C500, otherwise known as flotation tires. They put the tires on the, uh, the 900. Did I say 500? This is the C500. So they put the tires on the C500 and the W9. My brother was able to go pick up the Peterbilt. That had a new wire harness put into the transmission. That's got an 18 speed ultra shift. It would go into a, a overheating mode, a mode that uh, said the transmission was getting too hot and it would put the transmission in the limp mode. They more or less said it's gonna need a new wire harness for the transmission, so they ordered one. And this here is the old harness to the transmission. So he has a load of uh, BMR silage on the Moss trailer right now. He's actually sitting up on the scale. He just got done weighing it. That's sitting over here. See it sitting up on the scale here. So he's gonna run that around the block a couple times just to see if that transmission is has itself fixed. And then what we're gonna do is put the a set of flotation tires on it. We also need to switch the chopper over to chop corn that involves putting a longer neck on it we can kind of show you what that looks like right now compared to what it's going to look like when it has the longer neck on there we have to put the longer neck on it so that we can get the truck up close enough to the chopper with the 10 row head on it so it's got just a little short guy on there now the long ones well, it's a few feet longer than that one we also have to put the kernel processor in it. We're not gonna put the corn knives in right now. We'll have to go back to hay here in a few days. And then we also have a couple hundred acres that we could choose to do that's not cut yet. So the plan is to get one bunk full, go back to hay, screw around with the hay and then go back to corn we'll probably have to pull the long spout off and we'll definitely have to roll the kernel processor out of the way so we'll flip this stuff around here and we'll show you what things look like as we move along here well we've got the spout that is on there for doing hay we've got that removed that's over here on the ground, that little short section right there. This is the original end that was on there. And this longer spout is like 45 inches longer than the one that we just, now you gotta go to the right time. 45 inches longer than the one that we took off in there and that is just so that we can get the truck far enough away from the chopper for the 10 row head the choppers that have a 12 row head have a fold up end on there so we'll just lift this up with a strap hopefully we've got it balanced and we'll get it bolted onto there and uh then we can put the kp in
All right, we've got that spout on there. Now we're just gonna back it inside and finish hooking it up and we'll put the kernel processor in there. Well, they're back in the Peterbilt inside. They're gonna get big tires put onto it. My brother test drove it. Got the temperature on the transmission up to around 204 degrees and it shifts fine. So now we're ready to put this kernel processor in. Got it hanging from the electric winch. We've got the belt setting on the pulley. We'll show you what that looks like here in a second. We've got our parts. Just a pallet of spare parts here that we have for the chopper. We've got a spare set of belts for the kernel processor. We'll throw them under the seat. We've got corn knives here in a pail, and then I've got a bunch of bolts here somewhere, new bolts for those when we go to put them in. And we'll show you the difference between a corn knife and a grat, what they call a grass knife. So here's the corn knife here, and that has a larger cup to it. And then here is a standard uh, grass knife. This one here is brand new, never been used. This one here is a corn knife from last year, and it has uh, one season on it. So we've got the hardness right here. That is the hard part of the metal on the knife, and then once you get wore past that, uh, it'll wear uh, it'll wear out a lot faster. And you can see that the the one side, chances are this was probably an end knife. You can see the one side has hardly any wear, and then this side here is is wore down uh, a little bit. So we'll jump up in there. We'll show you what it looks like before it goes in and then we'll kind of show you how things go while we're putting it in it's just an electric winch we've got a little not really a remote but a handheld unit to run the winch we'll pull it up into place swing it around and then we can set it into the position that it needs to be in all right we're up in the compartment where this kernel processor is going to go and it's going to saddle right on to this mount here this is the right side that's the left side there we've got the belt actually there's a pair of belts they're three rib belts we've got them on the actual blower drive pulley so once we get this kernel processor lifted up we can swing it through this opening here and then we can go ahead and set it down into the area it's supposed to go in so we might as well set you guys up and we'll uh, show you how this process works here
Well, we've got this all setting in there. Now the position that it's in right now is it's out of the channel where the corn can actually come into it. So when we go to do hay, we'll roll this back out of the way. Right now, we've got to roll it in so that when the corn comes through the front of the chopper, it'll go through the KP and then up through the blower and out through the pipe. So right now it's in there like this. It's gonna flip right just about upside down so that the corn can go through that other side. So what we have is a little crank here that we're gonna hook onto this turnbuckle and we're gonna crank it into a place here. Now that's rolled into position, it went right in and it kind of went upside down. What there is is a just a U-channel in there. And that U-channel has moved forward and that is setting in behind uh, the cutter head right now. So we've got our drive belts on this side here and they are driven from the actual blower uh, pulley itself here. Well, we are set and ready to go. We're adjusting the shear bar. We do not have corn knives in this, but I did go through and adjust all of the knives that were not in the spot that they were supposed to be in. We changed our display here. Corn silage variety p1449 amx now the other day mike mitchell was going through his display and he was showing all of the different um crops here that you could uh harvest and a lot of them are kind of senseless lettuce onions peas peanut um Oh, what do we got? Sugar beet, sunflowers, timothy grass, tall fescue, wheat. There was, I think he came up with pineapple on his. But that was on the combine. And the reason why that might come up on there is because they'll use this. Well, this is the different a different display. This is a 4640. He was going off his armrest controller, and his armrest controller might actually be used in who knows what, musk melon. Not really going to harvest musk melon with the chopper. Um, lettuce, maybe. <laughs> but um, that'll give you an idea. So we are set to roll out here. We've got a five acre piece that we're going to try just up the road here just to kind of make sure everything is in working order. Um, we've got the kernel processor that we've got to make sure is adjusted right. 
We've got the head here that has had a lot of work done to it. And um, we have, uh, of course, installed the long extension pipe. So we'll get to the field, we'll fire up, we'll see how everything goes. Hopefully it goes without any problems. And then if it's dry enough, we'll get right after it here tomorrow. The moisture of the corn, that is. We want to get, uh, hopefully we've got enough time to get one bunk full and then we'll go back to hay. So we'll join up with you once we get up to the field here. They put flotation tires on two road tractors yesterday and they put flotation tires on to Peterbilt and truck nine, which is behind me uh, right now. So I don't know if I had said it earlier on in the video or not, but we got the Peterbilt back from the dealer. They put a wire harness into it. My brother loaded up with corn silage that we're going to feed. He drove that around and the, I think I did say it in a clip or two ago. The temperature, he was able to get the transmission temperature up to uh, 204, which it would go into limp mode when it got up to 195, I think it was, uh, prior to the wire harness going into it. The wire harness was four grand, and they charged $1,100 to put it in. And as you can see with the size of the harness, there was quite a bit to it. So we are going to keep on the road here and then we'll be to the field in a second. Well, here we go. This corn here was planted on the first day of planting. The six row planter planted this. I'm going to have to put the camera down because we have to fire on this truck in the road. <laughs> and I don't need to make a mess. So, we'll go ahead and join up with you in a little while. As you can see, the corn's kind of green. We do have some tracks coming in and out of here from when they put fungicide on. And I've got to watch things because I've got a telephone line up above me here. And i got to shoot under that and i got to hit the truck without getting any corn in the road. So we'll go over to our camera here and hopefully that is functional. So we can come on over here like this. We'll bring this down a little bit. And we'll see if we can't hit this. We'll leave you guys going, I guess. Shined up there. The 
plug the head on the right side. And the reason why we plugged it is because we've got a short row of corn. And what had happened was uh, here corn must have got caught down in the channel. the stalks are supposed to ride. So I don't know what we got going on here. It looks like he spun out or something. So we gotta get a truck with better tires on it maybe. The truck 18's got better tires on it. These trucks are twins. tires on it aren't that great. So we'll pull 18 in. It's got the 331s on it. getting ready to roll into day number two of chopping but before we get started we have an o-ring that goes in between all oh, this valve body here that we're gonna change and what it is is this section here comes apart and there's three o-rings in there I went to do it here the other day I didn't have the right freaking size o-rings. I thought I had some spare o-rings, but that wasn't the case. And um, I took it apart, and I'll put a little clip in here uh, from when I took it apart the other day. The o-ring had failed. However, I was able to luck out. I put the o-ring back in there. And uh, that was on Sunday, and I finished chopping uh, Sunday, and we chopped a little bit on Monday. So what there is is three eight millimeter bolts or four rather that go through this valve section I'll be able to get that apart pop that o-ring out and put a new one in there first. We're gonna 
blow this all off and clean it. I've got it up next to the shop here so I can use the blow gun. And then I'm going to turn it around so that any oil that drains out of that valve comes this way and it doesn't go that way because we've got the main cutter head drive belt sets right down in right there so we have blown this o-ring before and um ended up getting oil all over that belt we don't want to do that again because we had replaced that belt here between second cotton and third cotton all right so we've got the chopper turned around so any oil will drain off and come this way so we're just going to loosen these nuts up here and we can get this uh, section apart i've got the correct o-rings here now and we just need to get them in there I'm not even sure what this function does. Um, it might... It might actually go up for the folding or unfolding of the head or something. I'm sure somebody in the old comment section here will tell me what this valve goes to. It could also be for the spout. Small hoses, they're just... Uh, they're not even quarter inch, they're a little smaller than that. But at any rate, we'll get this swapped out. It had done it a couple of times last year. And we tried putting in just regular O-rings that we came across and they were not right and they failed again. And I don't know why they failed this time. There actually might be too much vibration in here uh, for this valve. And it might just fatigue the actual O-ring itself. Work on the O-ring that is. So Got one more nut to pull off and then we can slide this valve ahead. There's three O-rings in there, one had failed, but we will end up replacing all three, just because we have it burnt. Oh. Get this guy apart. It's going to leak a little bit of Earl out of there. Slide that guy out like that. Grab our prick. Top O ring that has failed. So that's this one here. I'll we'll set that there. Pull that one out. And actually, the other one has failed too. I need an O ring pick that is angled this one is not quite doing the trick there get that out now we're just going to wipe it with a rag actually shove a rag in that hole for a second We need, we've got some crap back here that we can try and get rid of just so that it is not getting in there. Yeah. Just 
second ring. Should be good. I hear the presence of a truck driver. And we're still working on this. <laughs> oh, you! I didn't know you were here. You know there's what? Oh yes, you do. What? Well, there's a lot of oil that was running on the. Yeah, bottom. I uh, went to change this damn O-ring the other day. I had O-rings in the armrest, and they were too small. I'm like, what the hell? So I put this back together Sunday, and I just ran with it, and it didn't really leak that bad, but we've had it leak before. I see. And um, I got the correct O-rings. I'm just putting it back together now. And then we'll be able to roll out. We'll go to Forward Road. We're going into Bunk One. We chopped five acres last night. Uh, no. It had the tires in it. What's that? It, that's where the tires were parked. No, Bunk One is up by the barn. Oh. Well, up top, nice. that smaller one. We'll fill that. And then we'll go back to hay when the weather allows. Yeah, that hay can sit there for a while. You, it won't change much. No. <laughs> it has so much. It has dew on it until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. All right. Well. I didn't realize, realize you were in here. You know what I looked? I said, geez, I wonder if he knows there's a oil on the ground. Yeah, I had to tip it this way so that it didn't get on that belt. Oh. It got oil on the belt last year. Actually, it blew an O-ring and it got on there. So, that's going to finish up this job. We'll clean up our oil and we'll roll on out of here. Well, here we are. The first full day of chopping for 2022. We're in a 50 acre field right here, open it up on the uh, 900. Jared did put the straight pipes on this here uh, the other day. We got rained off chopping hay. They put the flotation tires on it. They put the flotation tires on the C5 as you seen earlier on in the video here. And he snuck the uh, pipes on there. I kiddingly said the other day that we had to put the silage pipes on there and I had somebody say, what do you need the pipes on there for silage? Well, I'll just let somebody else answer that uh, question in the old comments here, but uh, Jared likes the sound of them. And they give you more power too. <laughs> uh, if you didn't follow along in one of the previous videos, we did have the engine rebuilt in the 900 and it is running in tip top shape here. All kinds of power, of course it had all kinds of power before the engine rebuilt. We probably could have ran the engine a little while longer than we actually did, but we didn't want to see any major destruction to a crane or what have you. So we'll keep plugging away here. The moisture on this is 66%. It's right where we want it. It actually can stand to be a little drier, being that this is going on the bottom of the bulk. So we'll join back up with you a little later on here. We just kind of have regular chopping going on. This field is quite large and what we need to do is cut windrows uh, around
around it so that we can get guys back in and on the road here. So we're gonna go ahead and cut right crossways here so that we can get Jared out onto the road. I don't see another empty truck uh, in behind him here. So we're just gonna cut right across here. We're gonna get him right to the road then we'll have the next one come in. It kind of makes a mess of the field, but being that we got a little rain here, and things could be a little sticky. We really don't know where the troublesome spots are gonna be. We got an idea of where they are, but we don't need to have somebody stuck on the outside of the field. And then the chopper has to travel all the way around the field get to uh, the truck here. So we are almost around to the driveway and it looks like I have estimated things out about right here in that we're going to have Jared just about full before we get to the driveway. We do have a camera on the spout, that's how I am able to aim into the trailer. However, the sun is a little bright. I'm getting a little bit of glare from the screen on the monitor here, and I'm getting a little glare in the uh, camera here, and I'm coming up to the edge of the field, and what I don't want to do is grab an obstruction that's on the outside of the field. So, cutting around here. Looks like he's going to lack a little bit right in his front corner. But, um, my phone is going absolutely nuts here too. So, yeah. sun in his eyes right there and bang he is at the driveway so we've got Alex on deck here we are going to stop him we are gonna back out onto the road we're gonna let him out and we're gonna let Alex slide in Big old driveway right here. My father put a, <laughs> he's about 80 feet uh, long right here, wide that is, on the driveway. So that trailer, it's about three quarter loaded. Got a car coming, just go, go ahead. You're all right. Even put the uh, 385 flotation tires up front of the 900 as well so we'll join back up with you in a while here well we're just getting opened up here now we've got the peterbilt that we're just getting loaded that's hooked to the red moss we've got nate on deck and timothy coming up with the uh, C5 here so things are going real good everything's going as good as expected and we're just gonna keep rolling along here we got over two inches of rain and the ground conditions are relatively decent compared to what they could be so the C5 has got the flotation tires on it, and we'll show you what the fenders look like on that. We had to cut the half fenders off of it because the flotation tires were rubbing on them. They weren't quite right anyways. We need to put a fifth wheel riser on that truck. The Peterbilt, those tires were rubbing on the half fenders that that had on there as well but they were able to be cut the outside rib was able to be cut off of them well we're moving
moving right along here. We've got opened up real nice. We're loading Tim right now. We got the C5 on this other black Moss trailer, which you've seen that on there before. We've got the flotation tires on there. And we had to cut the fenders in order for the flotation tires to work. The fenders couldn't be mounted any higher than they were because they would rub on the bottom of the trailer. What we need is a fifth wheel riser for that truck. The fifth wheel kind of rides a little low. So we're just motoring along here. Decent, somewhat decent corn for a shorter day variety. We can put wheat on this if we so choose. We've got a couple of other pieces that have this earlier variety on it as well. Everything has been working beautifully. And we'll keep moving right along here. The moisture's running at 66% and we're running at about 24 ton um, for yield. This is accurate. We have uh, run some trucks across the truck scale to do a calibration on the actual chopper itself. So that is going to do it for this video to give you a kind of an idea of the first couple of days of chopping from going out of hay to getting a chopper ready for chopping corn. So we'll catch you at the next one folks. I want to thank you for watching and we'll catch you later.